Hello guys and welcome to this short video to discuss about interproximal carriers. So how to avoid missing those small and initial interproximal carriers. And the first key point that I brought here to you guys is actually related to the fact that we are nowadays dealing with digital images, right? So we can adjust the zoom, contrast and brightness nicely on our software. Okay, so we need to adjust those three things. And when I say contrast, I refer to the contrast scale, which is the grayscale levels that I have between black and white. Okay, so if I have a nice contrast scale, it's better and easier to diagnose those interproximal carriers. On the images on the left side of your screen, it's more challenging to see, but now on the right side of your screen, we can actually see uh, the interproximal carriers because we have enhanced the contrast and brightness, okay? So if we see more advanced carriers with dentine involvement, then it's even easier. This leads us to the second key point, which is pay attention to the contact points, right? Usually the radial lucencies that we are seeing on the cervical side of the tooth close to the alveolar crest and the CJ are usually cervical burnouts. The carriers will likely happen on the contact points. So that's actually something that we need to remember. We are now uh, seeing, for example, those uh, initial carriers, those initial carriers as well. There are more, but then we can at least differentiate these from other alterations. For example, this calculus that we have here, right? Calculus happen in those spaces, but then interproximal carriers will likely happen on the contact points. If we see even more advanced cases, we can find this pattern. So we have a small involvement of the enamel, but then we have a larger involvement of the dentin, as you guys are seeing on the left side of your screen. So we, we need to always check the dentin involvement and then probably would have symptoms. So we need to correlate with our symptoms as well as we always need to do, okay? And here we have, just to finish, a case, you know, with a larger involvement of the dentin, and, you know, probably this could be even easier correlated to the symptoms of the patient. So those were the tips of today. If you liked, please hit the like button and see you guys on the next videos.